Yeah, really good practice. Uh, like what I saw from our guys. Um, you know, we're having some some really um, uh, long, uh, you know, tough practices. Have to prep that way for this game, and looking forward to a good matchup against Army. There. They're going to be a, a tough task for us, and and uh, you know just hope we can uh, be ready when all three phases up. But if we keep practicing the way we did, we did today, I'll be really really pleased. Okay, we'll take a question from Darnell and then Jake. Yeah, Kalani, you said after the game on Monday that you're allowing the players to have more feedback and a voice in the game plan. Can you elaborate on what that means and what that process is like? Well, I've always had good good relationship with them and, and talked to the players on. You know what they think about the scheme and and how they feel, and I just like to hear what they think. Most most of us to see what they know, you know, and uh, um, try to get them thinking about football. I think if they know that I'm going to ask their opinion um, on something, and they they probably should get their football IQ up and study the film a little bit more, and as they know that I probably you know going to pop the question about what they think and what what they what they like scheme wise that we have and and um, yeah, I think that's a good way to talk about ball. Just get our guys thinking about football more often. So, as a follow-up, does that happen during the week in game prep practice as well as the game? Does it happen in both situations? Yeah, it happens. It happens daily. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, I mean, I just want to keep talking ball and 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 and, and uh, kind of see what they how they think. You know, I, I think there's a way that I can our coaches can talk and teach if if we know what they're thinking and and how much they actually know. Rather, and if they're, you know, some there's a lot of ways to learn. Sometimes it's not just, uh, you know, just on the on the chalkboard. We've, we're trying to find effective ways of teaching, and so, um, and then sometimes it it affects, you know, it, it's a lot more effective with with different types of teaching for for each individual. And so we have enough coaches now to to be able to, um, you know, kind of uh, create a way of learning and teaching so that we can make each individual a little bit more, you know a little bit more effective and then help them learn as much as they can. So that's, we've been, we've been talking about teaching methodologies, methodologies for a while in the staff. And that's uh, something that changes every, every year and, and changes with your, with your, you know, each person that you coach. And so I, I think that we have a staff that's finding creative and innovative ways to teach. <clears throat> Kalani, a lot of people were kind of marveling at the performance your team put on Monday maybe surprised you the most about your team and maybe surprised you the least or something that you, you kind of had validated that you knew they could do? Um, I don't know if, if anything really surprised me other than just uh, the fact that our guys, um, I felt like they were all focused on, on, on this game. And I keep going back to the fact that there's a lot of um, experience on our team. You know, there's there's been times where we're sitting there trying to prep a kid that that this is their his first time being on the field and and has been away from football for a while because of a mission or injury and now we have a, a good number of guys that we feel like have been on the field and now you're just focusing on on um, the details of their assignment or technique. You're not having to just teach them uh, a play or, or a scheme, you know, and 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 trying to promote basically the football IQ and our players knowing more about football, just that, that goes hand in hand with recruiting guys that love the game and love being here at BYU. Cause I think if you have those type of individuals, they're going to get better. And, um, and then that combined with the leadership that we have on our team, I think it, 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 it should give us success. And hey, I just uh, want to go ahead. I just get one other, just on the 6,000 fans. Uh, do you have a reaction to that? Is it surprised? Some people might think that number's a little low. Others are saying, hey, at least there are some fans. What's your reaction? Um, from my understanding, that is that the, that's 6,000 for Troy. You know, I'm, I'm focused on Army right now, and, and uh, I'm, you know, just trying to be respectful to the media and talking about Navy and skipping ahead and talking about the home game. But um, I, from my understanding, Jay, is that, uh, it's 6,000 for this game, and, and who knows um, about the next game. It, it could increase in numbers. And so I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. But um, just really thankful that we get 6,000 on, you know, in the stands for the, for the Troy game. But uh, I think it's a week-to-week type of deal and, and how many they'll, they'll uh, allow in the stadium. Okay, we'll take a question from uh, Jeff Call and then Mitch Harper. Coach, um, 
Jackson McChesney announced uh, today that uh, he's out for the season, had surgery. Can you talk about how that affects the depth and maybe that position in particular at running back? What, uh, who, who are you looking to to maybe fill in that void? Yeah, I mean, I'm a little disappointed in some of the injuries that we've had. You know, Hinkley Rapati is 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 uh, is also injured, and so I think um, you know the sooner we get uh, Sione Fee now back, the the better. And he's looking like he's he's uh, ahead of schedule in, in his you know in his in his uh, conditioning and his rehab and everything. And then um, you know, unfortunately, what happened to Jackson? Uh, you know, he he did it early when he got into the game and, and continued to play and. You know, his his last play in 2020 was a touchdown, so that's a good way to go out. You know, but we'll get him back. He's he's a strong, resilient kid. He'll get back with us soon, and and uh, we'll be ready to roll with him again. But uh, unfortunate, you know, that's it. Seems like that type of injury, specifically the the, the foot, Liz Frank has been a uh, an issue. Whether whether it's the shoes or the surface, the turf, I have no idea. But uh, we'll just have to keep moving along. That 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 was a. That was, that was tough because I know how hard he's worked and how hard uh, Hinkley has worked to, to get to this point. But, um, you know, we, we had to shift Tyler Algier over from linebacker to, to running back last year. And so uh, we have a lot of guys that can swing that way as well and on from the defense to the offense and, and also change positions. So, um, you know, Kyrus keeps mentioning that he would love to play running back too. So, and so with Bracken L. Bakri and I'm sure Brady Christensen would like to, but, uh, you know, we, we, <laughs> Right now, we'll just focus on getting the guys there. I, I feel good with the, the, the two guys right now. I'm getting Sione back, and we have a, a number of other guys that I think could really fit in, and, and we'll, we'll see how they work. But, um, yeah, I, I, without giving away too much, I, we'll be, I think we'll be fine there. Hey, Mitch. Yeah, Kalani, um, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, you, you were talking every week about how you're seeking a, you know, a complete game, 60 minutes. You feel like you finally got that from your program after what transpired on Monday night? Well, I feel like our guys have always given great effort. I, I think when you have great effort and high, high level of execution, then that, that'll be good for our, our program and good for the result, you know, so... Uh, I'm really pleased with the effort, and then that combined with the, the high level of execution gave us the result. So I, I've been really happy with with how our team has practiced, and now you know got to do it again. We, we want to perform at our best game two, and our, all our focus goes to Army. Troy Warner played at cornerback against Navy. Is that going to be something that goes forward, or is that based on the opponent that you guys were facing? What's the kind of status with, with Troy and where he'll play on the field? I don't know, Mitch. Where do you think he was on the depth chart? What do we list him at? Was it, did we list him as a safety? Yeah, we haven't or? Got a new one yet, so I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it yet. So we'll see. Well, the old one, I think he was listed as safety. So who knows? I'm, we're crazy like that. We can, we can put guys at different positions, so I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I know what you're getting at, but, uh, you know, I'm, I don't want to give away. We have guys that can do a lot of different things, and – I don't know if you you if, uh, you're going to see him in the post or playing on outside on a receiver, but it, it helps to have a lot of guys that can that are versatile and can be in a lot of different positions. So I just no, I'm probably not going to answer that for you right now until we get to game. You'll see it. Hey, uh, Sean, we'll take your question and then Jake Hatch, and that'll be it. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned. Um, Moving on to Army, and obviously they run a very, very similar triple option system as Navy. Is this one of those cases where because of kind of the back-to-back -back nature of, of the game prep, you can kind of build off of what you prepped your guys to do against Navy and move them forward to Army? Or or are there enough differences where you're you're still kind of restarting like you? Um. We're, we're we're approaching Army uh, like this is the first time that we've seen seen their their style of offense and that we're going against. I mean, there may, might be some crossover, there might be there might not be, but I think we're looking at our personnel and looking at where we feel like we can get some uh, uh, you know some advantages. I think that's what we're going to look at, and that's what we've been trying to get done this week. And so we're trying some things and seeing if they're going to stick, and then looking at film and trying to research as much as what they're, what they're doing because I know that their coaches do a great job, you know, and Coach Munkin's been around for a long time, and I know that his days at Georgia Southern and all that stuff, he's, he's, he's always been a great coach and been able to get his guys ready. So 
uh, we're, we're going to have a good a good scheme ready to roll and, and hope our guys can execute it and we'll see how it goes. But uh, they're going to be a tough team. You know, we're expecting a, a, t- a really tough ch- challenge. So uh, you saw what they did to Middle Tennessee State and we'll see what they do uh, against Louisiana Monroe on Saturday. But uh, they have film of us and, and we'll have two games of them. And so we'll have to kind of assess all that and see what the best way to challenge them would be. And we'll take two quick questions from Jake Hatch and Jay Drew. Kalani, I wanted to ask you, I know we talked a lot in fall camp about your guys' scheduling. You got the eight games on the schedule. Have things died down for you at this point in the season, or are there still ongoing discussions about potentially adding more games? I think Tom's always talking about that and has a plan. And so I think that that's probably more directed at him. I know where there's open spots, and I know what we're hoping for, you know, and, and – and Tom's delivered. He's done. He's done a great job of getting getting the schedule going. And so, I'm just going to wait for what he he does. And right now, all our team cares about is that we have a second game on the schedule, and that's what we're focused on right now. And whatever happens after that, we'll, we'll deal with it later. But right now, all our attention goes on to Army, except when you guys ask me about the Navy game. Then I I gotta answer those questions. 